Do you guys want to see how to game at 1440p for the most cheapest price possible? Well, today we have the ultimate P520 guide. This right here is a Lenovo P520. If you guys haven't seen it before, it's an absolutely awesome canvas for building an awesome budget gaming PC. And in today's video, we're going to show you how you can make this thing into a gaming monster, show you all the different configurations you can go with, and show you step by step how to get to gaming. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Corsair and their HS80 Max Wireless Gaming Headset. Here at the office, we love using Corsair headsets at the majority of our workstations, and the HS80 Max is no exception. The HS80 Max Wireless is a multi-platform gaming headset, compatible with PC, Mac, consoles, mobile, and more. You're also able to enjoy true audio via high-fidelity 2.4GHz wireless and Bluetooth. Pair this with the 65-hour battery life, plush memory foam ear pads, and aluminum reinforced frame, you get a first-class gaming headset in terms of quality and comfort. If you're interested in learning more or in buying the HS80 Max Wireless Gaming Headset today, check out the links in the description down below. Big thanks again to Corsair for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and show you guys how you can configure your own Lenovo P520 from PC server parts, which we'll have a link in the description down below. There is a discount code that will give us affiliate commission, but will help you get the most bang for your buck when configuring a P520 system. Now, when we are building out a P520, we want to use the build your own section on PC server parts. The base configuration without anything is $118. But what we're going to go and do is show you guys what processor to get, what RAM configuration we recommend. And also, if you guys want to go with storage for them, you can do that. But we'll also show you some of the price differences and what we recommend. And if you guys are trying to follow this video at home, we'll show you the final configuration you should buy from PC server parts so you can follow along in the video and have no problems whatsoever. Now, the Xeon we recommend that you put in your P520 is one of two options. Both of them are six core 12 threaded Xeons, but you either want the 2130 or 2135. The 2135 just gives you a slight uplift in performance, no major difference here, but the 2133 gives you six cores and 12 threads at a really good bang for buck. In this video, we are gonna be using the 2135 because that is the uh, P520 we got sent to use for this video, but we do recommend the 2133 if you wanna save a little bit of money and you won't notice a major difference in performance. So 2133, use this one. It's slightly different than what we have. You might have slightly worse performance, but in reality, you're going to save a good amount of money going with this option. Now for the RAM, of course, in 2024, you want to have at least 16 gigs of RAM. And the best way to go about this is getting at least 16 gigs of two by eight sticks of memory, DDR4 2133. You can go a little bit higher if you want to, but realistically with these Xeons, you're not going to see a major performance uplift from having faster memory. But because we opted for the slightly slower Xeon and we saved a little bit of money there, we can actually get some faster memory. Uh, 2666 would be my recommendation if you are going to buy it straight from PC server parts and you'll have two by eight gigabytes, 16 gigs, and you'll be good to go there. Now, realistically, if you're going to follow this guide, this is where you would stop. You would scroll down, add to cart and use our discount code and you'll save a bit of money on checkout. But if you want to add a drive and you don't want to worry about installing your own SSD or even your own GPU, they do offer that as well. You can go to the drive section here and you can add yourself an SSD. I would not add a hard drive. Hard drives in 2024 are a big no go, uh, but you can add yourself an SSD if you want to, like a one terabyte SSD for $51, which I think is pretty competitive. It is a two and a half inch SSD. You could throw that in there, or you can go and add a secondary drive. But if you are going to just go no drive, you have to select drive one and hit no storage option to make sure you're committing that you're not getting a storage option. Um, you could also add M.2, which is the beauty of this platform. They do support Gen 3 NVMe SSDs, which will show you guys how to upgrade as well. You can add secondary storage and graphics cards. They have a couple of options you can go with. Most of them are honestly quadro cards, which for gamers don't really mean that much. You don't really want them. So I would really recommend just getting a generic graphics card that they do require you to get for $5, which I think is a little bit weird in my opinion. I wish they gave you a no GPU option, but we'll get a generic 128 meg graphics card that they're probably just trying to get rid of for $5 and everything else is good to go. You can pay for windows through them, but you are going to be paying a lot for the license versus something like a GBG mall. If you're on a budget, just go to GBG mall and all in all, $179, you have this nice Xeon, 16 gigs of RAM. Realistically, you could save a bit of money by going with the 2133 RAM kit. Let's go down here. Yeah, it's a little bit of money. You can see like a few bucks here, but either way, 2133, 2666, perfectly fine for this platform. That 2133 Xeon, which you can go with the 2135 if you want to, but anything beyond that, in our opinion, especially the 10 core variant, is a waste of money for gaming. It's not gonna give you any more performance. You might actually lose a little bit having a slower clock speed Xeon, but you'll have the option to go with this. 
and we're gonna go with no storage because we're gonna show you guys how to add storage. And the graphics card is gonna be very basic. So all I gotta do is add to cart here, and then you're gonna shop for your graphics card, which again, for this video, we went with the RX 6600, but there's a wide range of GPUs you can go with, and we'll leave those links in the description down below. So once you have your graphics card, and once you have your Lenovo P520, we're gonna dive into how to upgrade this thing, and we'll show you guys how to get to gaming. Let's do it. So the best part about this system is the fact that it's a full system that is literally ready to go. We just have to add a couple, and I mean a couple of components. We got a graphics card, we got an SSD. It is gonna be so easy. Just follow us and we'll show you what to do. So if you guys aren't familiar with the P520, this is a Lenovo workstation PC. So this would have been a really expensive PC back in the day, but now they're all over eBay in the one to $200 range with all different types of configurations in them. So this one right here comes with the W2135, which is a six core 12 thread processor underneath this gigantic cooler here, which is literally a big tower cooler that comes built in this case. And that's one of the reasons why we just love these builds. You actually get a total of eight slots for RAM, which is pretty cool. They just gave us two sticks in this one. And I think we just opted for 16 gigs here. Huh. It is gonna be DDR4, which is pretty cool as well. Cause a lot of these older workstations that are gonna be cheap, we're gonna be DDR3. And then I assume this one we opted for no storage yep, because no we're gonna storage. be adding it. But we also like these systems because they come with these. These are uh, six plus two pins and it comes with two of them so in theory you can go with the pretty freaking nice graphics card the power supplies can kind of vary this one right here came with the 900 watt 80 plus platinum and they are actually like hot swap power supplies so if you ever have one go bad they're super easy to replace and yeah it's just an awesome build actually this one actually has sata cables uh pre-installed it has nvme slots underneath here which we did confirm in the last video those do work really well with any modern nvme drive and yeah it also is just a massive system you got a lot of room in here and a lot of airflow to be able to add whatever parts you want so all in all we spend four $400 for our P520. If you want to copy this exact configuration, check those links down below. But what we're going to go ahead and do is talk about the graphics card we're going to throw in here first. This is the Power Color Fighter RX 6600, which is an 8K card, very power efficient, which really doesn't matter when you have a 900 watt power supply, but it's a really awesome graphics card that won't be bottlenecked too much by our CPU and also deliver great 1080p and 1440p performance. And if you want to go to the used market as well, you can save like $30 or $40 going with something like this or an RX 5700 non-XC, which we have benchmarked here on the channel before, but this is gonna be a really easy option to upgrade this P520 to make it gaming ready. And then in terms of storage, which we saved a little bit of money on not getting it from PC server parts, it's just this 512 gig Mushkin drive. It's Gen 3. You wanna go Gen 3 with these uh, P520s because they don't have Gen 4 support. So save a little bit of money there, but 512, one terabyte, whatever you wanna do, there's a ton of room for storage because this was a workstation. You could load up a ton of different drives in here and have everything you need to have a really awesome system. Now, let's go ahead and show you guys how to install the GPU, the SSD, and then we're gonna be able to game, show you guys the performance there, and also talk about the value proposition of these versus a budget gaming PC you would build on your own because they deliver some really good bang for the buck that's very hard to beat. All right, guys, we're gonna start with our SSD. Again, if you bought one from PC Server Parts, you won't have to worry about this, but I do recommend getting your own because you either get an SSD without Windows or you can pay for Windows from them, but GVG Mall is a better code, honestly. Go to GVG Mall, get your own SSD, save a little bit of money here and follow our guide. So we're gonna open up our SSD here this can be very straightforward. Here's our little NVMe Tempest drive from Mushkin. Whatever 500 gig, one terabyte, whatever capacity Gen 3 NVMe SSD you want to go with will work for this. And we're going to go ahead and install it right here underneath this little heat sink right here. I believe, I haven't done this before actually, I think you just twist it. So we'll twist it to the left and then it pops out and we'll go ahead and take it out, push back on it, it'll come off these hinges. And now you have access to two M.2 slots. We pull that up and wow, look at that. There is a thermal pad that allow you to get optimal performance. So what you're going to need is a screwdriver to unscrew the screw to allow you to install your NVMe SSD. So we're going to take our screwdriver and we're going to unscrew this screw right up here. It might be kind of hard for Jonah to show on camera, but we're going to use the top slot here and we're going to get a pH. We have pH one right now, but I think pH zero might be better. It looks like it's a very small uh, screw head or pH one. We'll go pH one. So we have pH two, go to pH one and unscrew this right here. All right, so we took this off and yeah, these are supposed to be toolless, but we've had issues with them where sometimes they just don't move properly. I'm assuming you're supposed to unscrew it slightly, move it out of the way, then move it back. But what we're gonna go ahead and do just for our situation here is we're gonna take this NVMe SSD. We're going to the top slot here, push it in, push down, and then we're going to screw this little cover back over top of it. Make sure this little plastic piece right here is going to hold down the NVMe SSD. So this little piece on the end. Line up the screw 
best of our abilities. And we're gonna lay it down. We're gonna go ahead and line. But once you get this screwed down, just like that, you should be nice and secure. Yep, there we go. Nice and secure. And now you have room to install another SSD if you want to, but we're gonna go ahead and put that heat sink back on, which I sat right here. We're gonna start with these hinges first. We're gonna hook it under both of them, push down, push down on the little red spring, and boom, you have your heat sink reinstalled. SSDs in there, good to go, ready to take Windows. Now, we gotta install our GPU, which is gonna be pretty easy because we have all the power we need and a lot of room to work with. Are you guys ready to install a <laughs> graphics card? <laughs> the best part about these systems is you can actually fit most three fan cards in here, but obviously you're usually gonna spend more money on a three fan card. So this is just one of the cheapest 6600s you can buy and that's why we like them, but they come basically ready to go. You really don't need to do much of anything. And this one's like really ready. Sometimes they have like full covers over them. Sometimes they have pretty much nothing. Once again, pretty toolless. Well, the last part wasn't exactly toolless obviously, but you pull up and then this kind of hinges over and then you're gonna be lining up this slot here. I just already know this is a two lane card. So I'm gonna be taking these two off. You ready, Jenna? You ready? You ready? What are you ready, yeah, ready? Oh, here comes the plane. Now that we're lined up and pressed down, that was a satisfying click. Oof. And then we just close that and that feels pretty good actually. Some of those optiplexes and stuff, these are pretty sketchy, but this feels good. Right back here, we're gonna need this power. So what I'm gonna do is basically just unclip this. They have like this really nice little mechanism. It's just a plastic hinge where they hook these two, but we're gonna be using it. Um, we're gonna need this extra connector here. These are always so fun to try to get them lined up. So this is called a six plus two pin. So we are making it into an eight pin essentially. All right, we got the direction right and boom. Yeah, make sure that that extra one is actually underneath it. You know, this should be a nice flush connection. And yeah, here we go. That's looking nice and clean. Let me go ahead and prop this up for you, Jonas, so you can just see. We really do like these systems though, guys. They're just super sleek looking. You can add some LEDs. We actually did that in the last time we used one of these. I added like a little RGB strip in the front. And uh, you know, the nice like red and black scheme is really cool. And even as this, which I just love. I'm like, why don't more manufacturers do stuff like that where it's like full diagrams in the motherboard? Yeah, P520, awesome platform for budget gaming. Really makes the normal Optiplex not worth it as much anymore, especially when building something around the $400 price point. But what we gotta do is get Windows installed. We're gonna install Windows, play some games, show you the performance, and then talk about other upgrade options you can go with if you do pick up the P520, because this platform is very versatile and there's a lot of room for upgrades in the future. All right, gamers, we're kicking things off with Fortnite, 1080p performance settings, 144 FPS lock, far view distance, low textures, and we're gonna see how Fortnite holds up on this little computer. I think you're under my Christmas lights. It's out of season. Peter, move on. It's not Christmas anymore. All right, so we're going to go ahead and drop in here. This is the first run of Fortnite, so there's always going to be the inevitable stutters. And if I die quickly, you'll get a second run. If not, hopefully it just cures itself throughout the run. Uh, but we'll see. Um, yeah, we should be getting good results here because of the Xeon being pretty high clock speed. Um, this uh, running form settings is definitely more CPU bound. But for 400 bucks, we'll see how it holds up. Oh, get me out of here. Actually, bring me back. Ah, ah. Ah, oh. well, you're gonna get that requeue. I don't know why I jumped back in on that. That was a bad play. Don't wanna go to the classy courts. Every time I go here, I die instantly. How in the, f actually, I know how I suck. Quit dancing. Hey, what's up? What are we gonna do it anyways? Oh, this guy's a real gamer. Oh, here he is. Oh! Jesus Christ. Oh, hey. Okay. Nice. Oh, why did I stand still? Oh, that was almost the end of me. Oh, yes. The Peter v. Peter.
Hey, Peter B. Peter to end on the P520, a victory. I'm sorry, Mikhail, for a 25 minute game, but we got the dub in Fortnite. Let's move on to the next game. Hello, Infinite. We're at 1080p, medium settings. We got max FOV. And so far, we're looking pretty good on this little AAA title. And this guy thinks this guy thinks he can fight us? Mm. He what thought wrong. And Zach's here with some recharging fuel for this benchmark Thank you, good sir. Yes. This yes. is not an ad by Starbucks. <laughs> Zach spent a lot of money at Starbucks this year. Oh, this is a really big map. I didn't realize that's like a whole second story. Yeah, buddy. Teammate, AFK teammate, you have to help me. Oh. Uh, does, anyone, does anyone else uh, say CTRL instead of control? Anyone else? Kyle's is gonna edit this and put no. <laughs> How do you guys say all? Oh my God. I was just a joke. I was just a joke. Oh! Uh, the guy just. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Yeah. I think seems kind of OP in this one. Oh. <laughs> My punch just didn't even... Uh -oh. I yeah. really just overestimated my punch, buddy. Oh, where did my thing go? I thought I grabbed the hammer. That guy. We got this, boys. You think you can just hide there, buddy? You think I just can't see you? Your teammate is yeah, going to pay buddy. That has some range to this. Ah. <laughs> yeah, guys, Halo Infinite ran really well. We didn't win, but what matters is that the PC carried pretty good. So yeah, let's run 3D Mark Time Spy, see how it compares to other PCs. I think it's going to be really good in terms of the cent per point. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, we just got done benchmarking the mighty P520, and this thing did really well. We were able to play Halo Infinite, which is a really fun to play AAA title that on medium settings 1080p, we were getting around 100 FPS with pretty good latencies, and of course, your esports titles are gonna run pretty amazing on this too. And speaking of esports titles, Fortnite ran flawlessly, 100 plus FPS on performance settings. You can modify things to DX11 or DX12. If you want better visual quality to take advantage of that 6600, but the performance was really good. In terms of that 3 mark Time Spy score, we ended up with a score of 7,694, which is a five cent per point score, which for comparison is the exact same cent per point score as our $500 build guy with the ARC A580 and a i3-12100F. So all in all, for $100 less, you're getting some good price performance, and that's why we love these workstations. The CPUs are still very relevant. You can go with a higher end GPU if you want to, and they're really easy to put together. So if you want to build one yourself and configure it, head over to PC Server Parts by using the link down below. We'll be in the affiliate link, and it will help us out. As always, everything else will be in the affiliate link for like the GPU, the storage, and anything else you might need for a P520. But if you have any questions, comment down below and let us know what you think of the P520 going into 2024. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. This PC right here will be available at PCBros.Tech at a really great price. And on top of that, if you want a custom build, we also have you covered. PCBros.Tech, we sell gaming PCs, gaming laptops, and so much more. Use code ToastyBros2 on checkout. You'll save 2% of your next purchase. See you guys later. Go on.